All right, when that big moment comes that your prospect goes to agree to the proposal, here's what they see. We've got a section where you can enter your name, your email address, and then sign in the box. And I'll hit accept. What's up everybody, it's Dave here from Profitable Tools and today I am looking at Quoters. This is a new proposal tool designed to help you make the proposal creation process quick and easy. But how does it hold up? Well, let's find out. I've got a fresh account set up right here. There are no proposals created, so let's go ahead and make our own. Now, before doing this, I will point out we need to get a few things in place. First of all, I'm gonna go down to Settings and then over to Proposals. Now, obviously, in under Information, I'll probably want to fill out all of the relevant information information about my business, but under proposals, there is something important you'll want to do more than likely, which is turn on proposal signatures. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to type in the person's name who's going to be signing the proposals on behalf of your company, as well as upload a picture of their actual signature. Now, I've just grabbed a stock image off of the internet, so don't think you've actually got my signature here. And then you check this little box, which enables your customers to actually sign the proposals. That seems a little bit weird to me but that's how it works. All right, now one other thing I've done ahead of time is I've added a contact in here. You can manage all of your contacts inside of Quoters and it does work with Zapier so you can integrate with your CRM or something like that. But for now, here we go. I've got one contact set up as kind of a template to get us going. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and hit create new proposal. I'm taken to a screen that has several templates all over the place here in terms of niche. We've got interior design, dental clinics, event planning, uh, total office renovation, really just anything you can think of. Uh, well, not anything. There's about 20 different uh, templates. So let's go ahead and choose one. I'm going to start with this digital marketing consulting template. I need to give it a name. I'm going to call it make money online and I will assign it to a contact. Now, if you had not created a contact, you can do that right from this screen, but I did it a little bit earlier to save time. Let's go. All right. Wow. The template has loaded and it's got a video background. Now, a few things that are unusual about this. First of all, I've never sent out a proposal that has a video background. The second thing that's a little weird is that the content itself looks like maybe a small child typing on a keyboard. So I would definitely want to swap that out before I sent it to anybody who's, you know, professional. Now, another Another thing that jumps out at me right away is the capitalization of this heading. Well, first of all, it's not the right heading. You'd think that they'd pull in the title of the proposal, which is make money online, but it looks like they just have kind of some stock copy right here, which I can show you how to replace, obviously. But also the title is not capitalized properly. We've only got the first letter, cap letter capitalized and everything below it is centered, whereas this is left aligned. So changing that should be easy enough. I can just select the text, the little editor pop open here and then I can center align it. It's just a little fit and finish thing that kind of jumps out at me as, oh, is, is this how the application is going to be? Now you might be noticing all of these little curly brackets with some uh, commands in the inside, things like business name, contact business name. This is actually a really nice thing. These are personalization tags. So what it means is that you can get the perfect looking template and then reuse it on multiple clients based on the information you fill in under your contacts profile. So for example, if I look at this on the front end, we're gonna see those brackets go away and it's gonna pull in the default uh, business information that I created. So Johnny's Lawn Care and then Client Amp is my business. This really does speed up the proposal creation process. I highly recommend utilizing these personalization tags in the creation of your own proposals and all of the other proposal software out there already does this. All right, back to the editor. Let me show you how you can add your own personalization tags anywhere that you can type. If you double click, you'll get the editor to show up and then they have what they call placeholders. These are the personalizations I was talking about. I can click on that once and I get a list of all of the personalization that's available to me. I can simply click on one of these icons right here and then it will copy to my clipboard. And if I want to use it, I just press Command or Control V and it's inserted into my proposal. On the front end, it will fill in with the contacts information. All right, let's see what's included in their template. I happen to send out quite a few proposals, so I'm pretty familiar with this process. So we've got an introduction now, ooh, right away, kind of another fit and finish thing. They've spelled introduction wrong. If I were to get a proposal that spelled introduction wrong, I would probably just throw away that proposal. Uh, so definitely a big red flag right there. You'll wanna go ahead and do some spell checking. Do not rely on their templates. However, let's look past that and continue on. We have introduction, briefing, and goals. Uh, what we'll do is the next section here. Now I'm noticing maybe just some design things in that. 
These sections are awful big to me. I would definitely want to tighten those up. We'll look at how to do that in a second. Got a nice little table in here. Implementation schedule, another capitalization thing on the heading. I'm just gonna point out this website quickly. Uh, this is called Capitalize My Title. It's totally free. And you know how sometimes when you're writing a headline for something, you're unsure which words should be capitalized and which words should not. Well, this will do it for you. It's just a quick and dirty, simple tool here. So if I were to copy digital marketing consulting and paste it into this tool over here, it will automatically capitalize the right words. I simply click the little button and then I can go back into my documents and replace it. So definitely check that out. It's a quick little pro tip. For now, I just got to replace that S. There we go. That already looks much better. All right, your investment, another little video animation type of thing going here on the background, really huge section. I'm not a big fan of how this looks, just wastes a lot of space. We got a pricing table down here. You can see that this looks a little bit different than the standard table, which you see above. And that's because it actually is a different section. Uh, if you go to any of the sections, you'll see this red plus button where you can insert a new section. Here I can see that you have the option to create what I'd call like a standard section, which has just text, images, or video. Videos. And then you can also do this pricing table section, which is a little bit different because this is where you actually list out your services. Anytime you're working on a section and you think you've really nailed it and you want to save it to use again in other proposals, simply click on this pencil over here on the left hand side, save that section. And then when you create a new section, it will show up here under save sections. All right, let's continue browsing through the template here. We've got the pricing section that looks fairly good our team. Once again, they didn't capitalize team. I also find it a little odd that this is left aligned, whereas everybody in the team is center aligned. Let's get everybody together here. Oh, so much better, right? I feel like I'm spell checking them, but here we have chief strategy officer, where strategy and officer are lowercase, but yet the marketing manager as well as the project manager both have capitalizations in their titles. So just more red flags that the copy here at least is not to be trusted. We've got some terms and conditions as we go down and a thank you with the business name. All right, so these are all good sections. This is everything at a bare minimum that I would include in a proposal, but it's a good time to mention. If you're wondering about what you should include in your proposals, I highly recommend checking out the agency overdrive training from Isaac Rudansky. Uh, I'll show you the sales page for it right here. They do have a deal running right now. It's 70% off for the lifetime of your subscription. It's a, a monthly recurring fee, but it's the best proposal training that I could possibly recommend. Isaac gives, uh, I think about a 40 minute lecture on how he creates proposals when he sends them out. And he even gives you an actual template of the proposals that he's sending to his clients. And he, deal he deals with some very, very large clients, people like uh, AMC, Nike, Forbes, you know, like really, really big companies. So back to our originally scheduled programming, let's go ahead and look a little bit closer at the editor here. So I'm gonna go down to this section right here. You can see it functions very much like a word processor. You can edit right in line. I can uh, add a line break here. Maybe I want to insert an image. I can do that by clicking on the image button. It does have an integration with Unsplash. So you can just grab an image and drop it right in, or you can upload your own as well. All right, I've added this image to my proposal. I can resize it. Now it will automatically center align all images. There's not any way to align images. I hope they add that feature soon. You can add a link to your image, but I'd caution against that. Once your client gets to reading your proposal, you don't want them easily distracted and sent off to another page. If I wanted to replace this background image, I could definitely do so. I'm gonna click on the upper left-hand corner here and go down to background. Uh, here I have the choice between just a solid color, an image, and it's gonna open up Unsplash again, and, or the video right here, you can see they're just linking up to Amazon S3. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this first so I don't have anything in the background. And then let's add a new background here. We'll choose an image. And how about this car over here? Let's add that in. Now, I would like a couple features here on the background image selection. One, I would like the ability to add an overlay, which I don't see any way to do that right now. So what I mean by that is it'd be nice if I could darken this background, maybe put like a, a slightly black hue over it. That's a little bit transparent so that it's easier to read the text. You can see that the white is kind of blending in with the white car here. The other option I'd like to have is the ability to move around inside of the image. If I wanted to maybe uh, zoom in on a particular part of the image or just crop it inside of the app. There's really no built-in tools to do that. I'll give you an example. Let's say I wanted to make this section a little bit smaller. In fact, I do. I think this is too large for an introduction section to a proposal. I can turn off auto size, which automatically shrinks it down a little bit, but they've also stuffed in a bunch of paragraph breaks here, which I can remove by hitting the delete key. Now, if I wanted to move this car up just a little bit to maybe get the bottom of it inside of the proposal, well, there's really no way for me to do that. 
Let's take a look at the pricing table right here. Editing this is a little bit different. It's not in line. When I click on it, it's gonna open up a pricing table editor. And here I can go ahead and enter in my services. Now, if you find yourself entering in the same items over and over again, you can save one of the items as a rate to your template library and then easily add them the next time you create a new template. For each item that you add, you'll add a description, the quantity, the price, a discount if you want to, and whether the item is optional or not. One of the more interesting features of quarters is this column right here that I skipped over called margin. So when you're setting up your rates, you can also enter in your costs. Now, what this allows you to do when you're creating a proposal is very quickly see what your margins are. Now, obviously this is hidden from your clients. They won't see your margins, but it tells you if you have a little bit of room to be able to offer a discount to your clients. Of course, you could do that in the form of a percentage off or just adjusting the price, however you see fit. I'll show you more on rates and costs in just a second. When you feel like your proposal is complete, you can preview it on the front end to make sure everything is displaying properly. Then go over to this next icon where you get your sharing link. Now, this will be customizable. You can add your own CNAME record in the settings. I'm not gonna go through that here, but it's very simple to set up. And you can even download it as a PDF. For now, let's go ahead and look at it in the preview mode. All right, I can see my proposal. My prospect's name is at the top. They can also download the proposal as a PDF, you'd be surprised how many people do that to share with their boss or whoever else is involved in the business. And of course, they can accept up here with the big green button. We can scroll through and see how everything renders. It's pretty identical to what we saw inside of the editor, although it would be interesting to know how things look in mobile responsive. So let's go ahead and inspect this. So here's what the proposal looks like on iPhone 10, at least as emulated on Chrome. You can see that the headings are ridiculously large and even more difficult to read than they were on desktop. These bands that were quite big on desktop are downright ridiculous in this mobile emulation. The rest of the text resizes fairly appropriately, but I do notice that as I scroll up, this header section here really jumps out and takes up a lot of the page. Hopefully on an actual phone, this would be off to the side and it wouldn't take up quite so much. As you scroll down, it does hide mostly, but it doesn't ever quite go away. Things like the Your Investment section that had that animated coin moving around look plain goofy. It looks like you've completely screwed up. All right, when that big moment comes that your prospect goes to agree to the proposal, here's what they see. We've got a section where you can enter your name, your email address, and then sign in the box and I'll hit accept. All right, at this point, emails are fired off. Your client will receive an email with a download link for the PDF so that they can hang on to it. You'll also get an email notification to let you know your proposal has been accepted. So before we wrap up this video on quotas, let's go ahead and just look at a few more features. Inside of the library, this is where we have rates and costs that I was telling you about in the pricing table. So what you'd wanna do is go in here under rates, add in all of the services that you typically provide and what sort of markup you have on them. You can also add new costs right here. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go into the dedicated cost screen to do this, but you'd be able to add in the costs and then quickly uh, manipulate those when you're creating your proposals to make sure that you're uh, offering something that's both profitable for your business and a good offer for your prospect. So that's gonna do it for Quoters. I think it's a fairly interesting app. It does have a little ways to go in terms of getting the aesthetics to be of a professional level, at least out of the gates in terms of those templates. So I'd love to see them step it up a few notches there. I think all of the features that they've got integrated are actually fairly compelling. It does almost everything I'd like to see out of a proposal app. I wish it had some kind of email tracking uh, so that when you sent out the proposal, you could uh, know when your client opens it, receives it, and actually views the proposal. I think that's a nice thing to have so that you can maybe you know jump in and, and uh, call them up and ask if they want to talk about it at that point. It's really, uh, you know, when people are excited about things, it's good to capitalize on it. So I would love to see a few more enhancements come to quarters, but as it is, it's a fairly nice entry into the proposal marketplace. If you want to check out Quarters for yourself, you can click the link down below. That'll be our referral link for this channel. And if you really love this stuff, make sure you get subscribed to the Profitable Tools YouTube channel. Click that notification bell. We're posting new content about tools to help grow your business all the time. And if you're really into it, join our Facebook group. We've got a great community of like-minded entrepreneurs trying to enhance our business, make it as automated and profitable as possible. Definitely check it out over there. I will, again, include the link in the description for that. It's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and I will see you in the next review.